after years, and I mean years in the making, it is finally time for me to dive into Tron Light Cycle Run at the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. We've been talking about this ride for far too long, and just the other day I was able to get my first ever ride on this brand new attraction. And wow, we have a lot to talk about. So let's just get started with the basics, run through them, get them over with. Tron Light Cycle Run is a Vacoma booster bike in Disney's Magic Kingdom in the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. It's around 3,200 feet long, 80 feet tall, and reaches speeds up to 60 miles per hour. Located in the back of Tomorrowland between Space Mountain and the Barnstormer over at Storybook Circus. This ride was initially announced in 2017 and broke ground in 2018. This means, yes, it was under construction for five years. And now here in 2023, it is finally getting ready to open up to the public. So I was extremely excited to get on Tron because I've been watching this ride get built since I was 15 years old. So being able to get on Tron finally was a surreal experience. At least for me, unlike Guardians, I knew exactly what I was getting into when I rode it. So I already knew what the pre-show was, what the station would look like, the layout, etc. So it was just a matter of when am I going to get on this ride. Now, I want to share, if you're watching this video right when it drops, Tron is not yet open. I was lucky enough to be invited for a cast member preview for this attraction, as this ride will officially open to the public on April 4th, 2023. And one thing I want to talk about before we get into the attraction itself is that this ride will open with the boarding group system. So this will be the fourth attraction at Walt Disney World now to utilize this system, with the others being Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which as of now is still using this boarding group system. But don't be surprised to see Guardians lose the boarding group system honestly any day now, because we can guarantee that by April 4th, 2023, Guardians will finally use a standby system. I'll get into my thoughts on Tron using this system later, because that will affect the overall ride. But let's get to the actual ride. So when you enter Tomorrowland, you're going to walk to the back as if you're heading to Space Mountain. Right before the gift shop, you're going to turn to the left, walk under the people mover, and enter the Tron area. And wow, this is amazing. The sign looks really good. It's a great entrance, honestly, to the attraction, especially with the trains just flying in the background, hearing the soundtrack through the canopy. It's just absolutely surreal, and it's honestly just stunning to see in person. The concept art had the sign hanging from the canopy, similar to Shanghai version, but honestly, I'm, I'm not complaining. I like ours. It looks cool, and it's different from Shanghai's, and it gives it some character. When you enter the canopy, you're going to walk all the way around the coaster and find the entrance of the attraction at the very end of this long walkway. This whole canopy is just phenomenal. I still need to be under the canopy at night, but from what I've seen, it's just a spectacle. The whole design of this building is just so unique, and the way it revolves around the small outdoor section is just absolutely incredible to watch. One plus with this massive walkway is that whenever this ride decides to use the standby system, it will have plenty of space for an extended queue without flooding over into Tomorrowland. It's nice to see, because I know whenever Guardians decides to utilize the standby system, this will be a big issue for them, whereas Tron will have no problem whenever that day arrives. Now let's talk about this queue. You walk in and see this nice entrance preparing you to enter the grid. You start the digitizing process in this hallway where all these lights are moving around throughout all these blue lines in the walls. It looks really cool when you enter the pre-show, and I love this pre-show. It's quick, gets to the point, has a cool reveal, and you're off. You walk into the small room and hear, users, prepare to be digitized. The screen in front then does some cool effects, flashes white, and boom, there's Tron right in front of you. When this reveal is timed right, it's something special, because it's supposed to sync with the train launching when the coaster is revealed. With the 8 rides I've got so far, it honestly was 50-50 on its match, so I would say don't expect to see the train launch every single time. But if you weren't able to see the train, go then when you exit the pre-show. A train will shortly appear in the launch track hopefully, and you can watch it launch there. It's really cool and honestly my personal favorite part of the queue. You then enter the training room where a guide will tell you your role for Team Blue and how you're going to fight off Team Orange in the games. It really is just extended queue space whenever the line gets long. Still, it's nice little details like this that'll entertain you while you are waiting. And then you enter the locker area. If you've ridden Jurassic World Velocicoaster over at Universal Islands of Adventure, it's the exact same system. You scan your park ticket, magic band, etc. and it'll open your locker and you can put all your belongings in. I was able to fit my camera bag in pretty snug, and that's about the size of an average backpack, so you should have no issue fitting all your belongings in here. I know many people were having problems with the system, but I never had one problem with any of my rides. And they are double-sided like Velocicoaster, so when you get off, you just scan your band on the other side, grab your belongings, and move along. After you get past all the lockers, you enter the station, which is massive. 
You walk in and right in front of you is this enormous screen listing Team Blue and Team Orange members. You walk down this massive switchback, get in your row, and board your light cycles. Now for me, this was no issue. But I already knew what I was getting into on this ride, and this boarding system is definitely going to have its fair share of problems if you don't know what's going on. First, if you're on the other side of the light cycle, you must walk around the other one. I know some people will not do this, so I feel for these cast members who are going to have to deal with these guests. Then you put all your loose articles like your phone, wallet, and keys in this little compartment in front of you, which is very smart and easy to use, and there's actually a lot of space in there. Then you line up your legs, lean forward onto the bike, pull down on the handle for the restraint to come in place, and then lock in. It's just very bizarre, honestly. I wouldn't say it's a bad bizarre, but I wouldn't say it's good either. It's just very unique. I was comfortable for the ride, but if I was in this position any longer than five minutes, I would get uncomfortable. Especially after eight rides, I noticed my back hurt more than my legs. It's not that big of a deal. I just know people are going to complain about this. Finally, after you board your light cycle, you dispatch and enter the grid. After a small turn to the left with the onboard audio blasting, you enter the launch tunnel, and after a quick 3 second countdown, you accelerate and reach your top speed of 60 miles per hour. This launch is surprisingly really good. The kick isn't what stands out, it's the gradual acceleration. You feel this thing speeding up throughout the entire launch, and that's saying something. Because this launch sequence especially is long. This launch is much better than the Cosmic Rewinds, but I also wouldn't say it's as powerful as Rock and Roller Coasters. It's right in the middle. Right when you exit the launch, you enter the massive turnaround, and this is my favorite part of the ride. If you're in the front, that pull-up is forceful. Plus, you really feel the speed throughout this entire element. The view you get soaring around the canopy is really cool no matter where you look. Just looking at all the people on the walkway or the lights above, there's just so much to take in during this outdoor portion. After the pull-up into the indoor section, you now enter the grid. You drop down, and if you're in the back, you'll feel a small pop as you turn into the grid, and the reveal is just incredible. You can hear my excitement when I enter it for the first time. After you drop down into the grid, you soar through another checkpoint and enter your first out of many turnarounds. You then pull up into a mid-course, drop down into another turnaround, and then fly into another mid-course. Finally, you'll finish the ride with yet again another turnaround, a small airtime pop into once again another turnaround and enter the final break run. Yeah, this ride's a little repetitive, but it doesn't have to do anything else because it's super cool when you focus on the effects. One of my favorite elements was right after the first mid-course, your light cycle turns orange and there's a giant mirror that makes it look like you're about to collide with another train. That's one of the coolest effects. And then the screen effects at the very end of the ride are really cool and well done. They're really big and the graphics are incredible. Plus, the light sequence on the final break run is really, really well done. Definitely very similar to Cosmic Rewind, but different enough to feel unique. So, when you think about everything overall, I have one major complaint. It's short. Very short. From the time the train launches to slowing down on the final break run, it's only 55 seconds. So, yes, while this ride is really cool and enjoyable, it's also really short. I feel like they could have done more because if this ride was 30 seconds longer, it would be one of my all-time favorite roller coasters. Now all this combined leads to my biggest complaint, and that has nothing to do with the ride, it has to do with the boarding groups. Rides like Rise of the Resistance, Cosmic Rewind, and even Ratatouille are okay with boarding groups because the ride is long. So yes, even though I would want to ride all of these rides again, it was long enough to where I was satisfied. Tron is not. Tron is very short. I was not satisfied after one ride and needed multiple to really appreciate it for what it was. Because if I got one ride and that was it, I would have been disappointed. Not saying that because it's a bad ride, I loved it after the first ride, I just really wanted to get back on because I feel like it all happened in a blur, and I don't remember anything about the attraction itself. So in conclusion, Tron Light Cycle Run is excellent. It's honestly a great fit for the Magic Kingdom, especially since the last ride we got here was Seven Dwarfs Mine Train back in 2014. So it's been 9 years since anything new has come to the Magic Kingdom. I think this ride honestly is going to be even more special once the boarding groups are gone. I know I've talked about this too much, but I really don't like that this ride is going to have them. If I were to guess, they're probably going to take them away right before Tiana's Bayou Adventure opens since that is currently set for a summer 2024 opening, and they'll probably put boarding groups on that ride. So if I were to guess, prepare to deal with these boarding groups for the next 15 months on Tron. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the new for 2023 Tron Light Cycle Run Roller Coaster at the Magic Kingdom. 
If you're new to the channel and enjoy this video, it would be amazing if you would subscribe as that is the best way to support the channel. And comment below your thoughts on this brand new attraction. As always, this was Hunter from Theme Park Hunting. I'll see you guys later and follow the thrill. Thank <laughs> you.